Dielectrics or oxides form an integral part of CMOS IC manufacturing today. Traditionally, a liner composed of silicon dioxide, also called as fused silica or quartz glass, even though it's not really quartz glass because quartz glass is crystalline and the silicon dioxide is actually amorphous. It's uh, the silicon dioxide or silicon oxynitride has been used as dielectric in MOS transistors. But now we have moved to high K and low K dielectrics. How they are used in manufacturing and what are high K and low K dielectrics? Let's understand in this video. The Wikipedia says the implementation of high K dielectrics is one of the several strategies developed to allow further miniaturization of microelectronic components, colloquially referred to as extending Moore's law. When we say dielectrics, there are two types of dielectrics the gate dielectrics or gate oxide and the inner layer dielectrics. So we will deal with these two separately. The first is gate dielectrics. If you consider the equation of the drain current in saturation of a MOSFET, it will be like half mu n C ox W by L VGS minus VTH whole square, neglecting some conditions and uh, second order effects like channel length modulation and body effect and other things, right? So what if we want to increase the speed of the device? We want to make this current increase, right? Or uh, to increase the drive strength, we have to increase this current, which we can increase it by design, which is W by L, increasing W, and we can we can increase the oxide capacitance, right? The oxide capacitance itself is a function of K times epsilon naught divided by T ox. It's a function of the thickness of the oxide where this epsilon naught is permittivity of vacuum. In order to increase the oxide capacitance, the thickness of the oxide is scaled down in tandem with transistor scaling until the oxide thickness reaches only a few layer of molecules or a single atomic layer which is deposited as atomic layer deposition. But the problem is below 20 angstrom Nowadays, it has reached to one angstrom as well, but still below 20 angstrom, the tunneling leakage through the gate becomes a serious problem. So this has given a problem of not reducing this thickness of the oxide further. So what option we have, we cannot reduce epsilon naught, that's a, that's a normal constant, and deox, we cannot reduce much. The only thing that we can increase is now K, which is kappa or dielectric constant. In fact, the tunneling current for silicon dioxide is order of magnitude higher than that of other gate oxides at this thickness. So there is a chance that we can make it better. Also, the re reliability is a concern when this thickness reduces because the dielectric can break down pretty easily. So these are the two important reasons. One is the speed and one more is reliability are the main reasons why we are going for high K dielectrics. So if the dielectric constant for silicon is 3.9 and if we go to higher dielectric constants, what we can do is we can increase the capacitance which will in turn increase the drive strength of the current which will increase the speed of the device and also solve the problem of reliability. So the properties of high K dielectrics, some of the important properties are these, which are high dielectric constant, the low leakage current density, the small flat band voltage shift, and low concentration of bulk traps and reliability. When I say small flat band voltage shift, it's this voltage in VT0. This is the threshold voltage equation. If you're not familiar with this, uh, I can make another video where I can explain how this equation came. This is the device physics of MOSFET, where this V flat band voltage, uh, there, no, there shouldn't be more shift in V, uh, v flat band voltage is what it is saying. If it is there, the VT0, the, the threshold voltage, it can vary a lot and there will be increase or decrease in uh, the threshold voltages. With the introduction of high K, gate oxides threshold voltage 
tends to increase significantly this requires the use of metal gates than the polysilicon so i have explained in one of my video why polysilicon is used as the gate material in uh, mosfets but now polysilicon cannot stay because of this high gate oxides introduction because of this phi ms which is the work function difference between the metal and the semiconductor tends to increase which will in turn increase the threshold voltage which is not a good thing to solve this problem we have to use metal gates than that of the polysilicon so some of the materials that can be used as high k dielectrics are listed here and some of them are not stable on silicon like titanium oxide and uh, the tantalum oxide so these are not stable and uh, mostly now, hafnium oxide is preferred because of its highest uh, dielectric constant, which is 25. So, now let's understand why low K dielectrics are used. We discussed about the gate oxide. Now, we have to discuss about inner layer dielectrics. As the transistors count increase in higher technology nodes, the interconnect lengths also increasing. Okay. The interconnect capacitance dominates than that of the gate capacitance so the delay of the interconnect increases than that of the delay of the cell itself and it's the greatest source of dynamic power dissipation and the power dissipation is very important because of the ppa requirements right power performance area requirements so there are efforts being put both from the design perspective and also in the technology nodes at manufacturing level this is addressed by reducing the dielectric constant for the dielectric material between the metal layers which directly reduces the interconnect capacitance and contributes to the power reduction and that is where our low k dielectrics come into picture so the interlayer dielectrics must also meet the thermal specification to transfer heat uh, effectively otherwise we will have the heat trapped and that will heat up the chip and it will destroy it some of the components which are used are some organic materials such as polymers polymides and many other stuff and also the porous silicon dioxide are discovered as possible alternatives intel 14 nanometer technology as per wikipedia's data uh, it says intel's 14 nanometer technology uses gaps in between the interconnects so usually dielectric constant below 2.5 is used in advanced technology nodes to achieve low power dissipation that's all for now i'll see you in the next video thanks a lot for watching and please subscribe to my channel and bye bye